everyone, I'm Erin Spinagle, the teacher who draws. Today, we're going to draw a well-known place in West Virginia. You may have seen this landmark before. We're drawing the New River Gorge Bridge. So, gather your supplies together, because together, we're going to make it. Let's get started. All right, everyone, I don't know about you, but I am ready to draw the New River Gorge Bridge. So what you see in front of me, or on the table rather, is our example. And I'm also gonna be sharing with you some facts about the New River Gorge and the, uh, the bridge itself. So let's get started. Let's look at our inspiration picture, our reference photo for today. And I've got it in the shape protector so that I can take my dry erase marker over it. Let's look at the shapes we're going to be drawing before we get started. So we're definitely going to have a straight line and I'm going to show you how to make that straight line here in a minute, followed by some more parallel lines that run this way. And I won't go over every single line there. And remember, we're going to be drawing the likeness of this, so we don't need to worry about every single tiny line there. We've got a curve. And then we have some other organic lines that are going to run this way. And then we have our new river that's down through here. So these are our basic shapes, line, curve, wavy lines down through here. Very basic lines that we'll make, and we'll do most of our detail with color. Color, color. So this is going to be a mixed media project, meaning I'm going to use some colored pencil, I'm going to use crayon, and I'm going to use a little bit of chalk pastel as well. So you can choose to just do it in one medium, or you can really mix it up today. But don't be afraid to mix up your supplies and see how the crayons work with the colored pencils. And if you got some chalk pastels, how they work out too. You can experiment with different textures and different techniques when you use different products. So I'm going to move this out of the way. We'll take one last look at our example here before we get started. Remember, we don't have to draw every single tiny detail. We're drawing the likeness. We want it to be realistic, but it doesn't have to be exact. All right, and we don't ever do anything exactly the way we want it the first time. Well, you might, but if you don't, you're not alone. So to get started, I'm going to use a brown colored pencil. This is a Prang colored pencil, but you can use whatever brand you've got. And I'm going to use a straight edge. So if you have a ruler, that's great. But if you don't have a ruler, don't think you can't draw a straight line. You can use a book, a piece of cardboard, anything that's got a straight edge can be a da -da -da -da, straight edge. All right. So I'm going to position this, making sure my paper is reading the shot here so you see everything. We're going to start by drawing a line. And you just will leave maybe about three fingers width. At the top, if you want to do a little bit less or more, it won't really matter. You don't need to be exact. I'm just going to go by about three fingers width. And I'm going to just zip a line across the top. Zip, zip, like that. That's the top of my bridge. And we'll go back to that in a minute. So I've determined where the top of my bridge is because I want to make sure that I make that my emphasis of my artwork today. Now I'm going to take a green colored pencil, and this is like, wait, what? I thought we were drawing a bridge. Well, we are, but we're going to drop down here for a minute, and you're going to leave maybe about, eh, about another three fingers width, and we're going to be making some soft organic shapes here. So organic shapes has nothing to do with if it's, you know, like when you hear about organic fruit or organic uh, products at the grocery store. It just means a soft, natural, not a exact shape or line here. So I'm going to take my pencil and I'm drawing the gorge or where it, the valley where it gets deeper or it starts out steep and it gets lower. And I'm going to go over on the other side and I'm going to do the same thing. It does not need to be exact. And I did a lot of wiggling here when I made these lines. This is just a baseline. I'm making mine a little bit darker than what yours needs to be because we're going to cover this up. And I'm going to drop down. It doesn't have to be straight down 
I'm gonna drop over to the side here and I'm gonna make another kind of wiggly line. And then I'm gonna come over and I'm going to make another wiggly line. This is actually where the river is going to be. You won't see all the river in here, but the river is wider up close or appears wider up close to us and it looks smaller for further back. That's called perspective. Okay, so we've got that marked. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go back to our brown colored pencil and we're going to be making a curved line. Now listen, you can take your finger first and practice where this curve is going to be. But listen, I don't want you to, I don't want to see this. Don't go like this and be like, oh, oh, I must make it perfect. I must make it perfect. Oh, 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 it's not, oh, I wiggled. No, okay. We're going to hold it back. Hold your pencil back here. And <clears throat> this bridge is, it's built and it, you're not going to see parts of it. So we need to come down a little bit. Maybe you can even like start a little bit down further in your, where you marked your, your gorge, marked your green grassy, your, your green leafy area rather than not grass. We're not drawing grass, we're going to draw some trees. And we're going to pick up our pencil and we're going to make an arch. Do it light, draw light till it's right. Don't, don't go all the way up to this line. Leave a little bit of space, leave like a finger's width of space. See how I'm picking it up? That's how I get the curve that I want. All right, if I would not, if I went like this without picking my pencil up, I don't think I would have the same results. All right, and I'm gonna stretch it out to over here. And that's how I got my curve. Look how far back I was holding my pencil. All the way back at the very end. That's what gives me the control. If I were holding it up here like this and dragging it across, it wouldn't look like that. I can assure you. Then I'm gonna come under it and I'm going to Scratch, 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 scratch. Going to make another curve like that. Okay, so I've got my curves in. And we'll go back and we will add some detail to these as we go. But actually, while we're here, let's go ahead and we're going to do like a zigzag. But I'm going to pick up my pencil. So this is showing the structure of the New River Gorge Bridge. Like I said, don't worry about if it's not perfect. Maybe you've never drawn a structure before. So this is kind of like a landscape and a structure, a man-made feature. We're doing two at the same time. And the New River Gorge is actually kind of unique like that because it is a natural feature, the New River, the New River Gorge, and then you have the bridge which is most definitely man-made. Now I'm going to share some facts about those things in just a few minutes after we get our basic stuff started. All right, so then what we're going to do before we go up to the top, we are going to go up here and this line needs to be a little bit softer. So I'm going to go right above that straight line. And if you want to use your ruler for this, you can, you don't have to. I'm going to just be big and bold here, and I'm going to gently drag my pencil across to make the top of the bridge. You could very well use the straight edge or use a ruler. All right, now I'm going to make the parallel lines or the post or the beams that make up the bridge. So I'm coming down here, and you could use a ruler for this, but I am just going to hold my pencil back here at the end, and I am going to... Come down, and I'm going to leave some space between each line. So we're going to practice drawing the likeness of the bridge today. We're not going to be too caught up in making it exact or precise because I would rather you focus on getting the likeness. But as you see here, they're going to get a little bit shorter as they come up. We'll kind of put a little more space there. Yeah, there's a time and place to be exact, and today is not, we're going to focus on just getting the basics in here and our very first landscape we've done together. I'm going to space them out over here. You could add another one down here if you'd like. Don't be afraid to take it, drag it down into your green area here, because like I said, we're going to be drawing the bridge and we're not going to be drawing every single part of the bridge that 
uh, is seen. Some parts of the bridge are not seen through this perspective or through this view of this this uh, reference photo we're using. So we've got our bridge in here. Now what we're going to do, we're going to draw the structures or the beams, the, the supports through here. And it's like a zig, kind of zigzag, but it's kind of like a, a crisscross. So I'm going to come over to the side and I'm going to make another parallel line. And I'm going to make my X and then I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to make now, make now, now listen, we won't do this all the way across because from like the view of this photograph and they get closer together as we get towards the center, you won't see them over here on this side as much. And we could add more detail. You could add more detail if you wanted to. But today we are just doing a, like a sketch in a, in a simple drawing. So I'm going to get up here. And then I'm just going to start making the lines look a little bit thicker. So I'm not going to add as much detail. So where we're, from where we're standing, we will just see more of the beams over on this side. Alrighty, so I've got that scratched in. And we're going to go back and add some more detail and make this darker so that so the bridge stands out more. But for right now, we've got the important parts done. Okay, so now we're going to move down here to the landscape part of our Nuremberg Gorge Bridge. To do that, we're going to uh, first, let's take a brown, and you can use the same brown that you were using. I'm going to use a little bit lighter brown, but we're going to mark in some trees, and we're not going to be really exact because we can't draw every single tree that is in this space. So what we're going to do, keep your lines straight. We're just going to push pull up and though trust me you are going to have a lot going on in this area we are just drawing an impression of where those trees might be and we're not drawing the leaves we're just drawing the trunks for where the trees will be along the riverbank and there will be a lot going on here and if you want to make any of these more exact or precise you certainly can I'm just drawing, you see how far back my hand is? I'm not being very picky about where I stick these because I know I'm going to be coloring over them. I just want you to be able to see the tree trunks through the uh, color, through the leaves. Okay, and I'm going to go with my darker brown. You don't have to do a different color brown. If you just have one brown, that is fine. Alrighty, so. Like I said, we're not going to worry about that too much. We'll go back and we'll go over it here uh, later. So here's my itty bitty yellow crayon, just to show you that you can make art with anything, no matter who, qu what shape it is in, what quality your supplies in. If, the, if it still colors or still writes, we'll use it. So I'm going to use a yellow. And what I'm going to do, I want to mark the areas of the trees or just mark in some areas where it's lighter, where it's like maybe the trees, maybe this is fall and the trees are starting to turn color or maybe the trees just start picking up the light from the sun and they look a little bit more of a yellow green in certain areas and i'm just going to lay it on its side i'm going to add some color and i'm going round and around and around and around notice i am not trying to color in individual leaves that would take forever we're just not going to do that don't worry about if you go over the lines here it's okay, they're trees. You can color over, oops, I kind of go over my, my river starts there. You can color over the tree branches that we drew. That's not a big deal. In fact, I'm gonna be coloring over that a lot. So we're gonna add a little bit of yellow, lay it on its side. Well, the more you lay it on its side, don't use the tip. Don't, don't use the tip, that's how you smush the tips and that's also uh, not gonna get you the coverage that you need. Next thing we're going to use is a, you can keep using the yellow or you can use this as a green yellow. And I might just color over that a little bit, but I'm still doing my lighter areas. And I can always go back and add the lighter areas afterwards, add more lighter areas afterwards. But I'm just thinking of where I would put some trees that are a little bit lighter green. 
I'm like, I'm showing you this and we're doing this, things like this because you're like, whoa, this isn't real. She looks like she's scribbling. Well, it's not really scribbling. We're just shading. Think of it that way. We're adding the shade, the shady areas, the shady areas, friends. All right, and we can always go back and add more, but that's a good start. And now we're going to go into the green. So I've got some greens here, and you could use a regular grassy green, but the greens that I've pulled for the day, I've got a olive green, I've got asparagus, and I've got forest green, which makes sense because this is technically in a forest. So I'm going to go in with um, these different greens, and I'm just going to start adding some areas to show where the tree leaves are darker. And you can layer over the lighter areas. Don't push so hard that you cover up those lighter areas though, because you want them to shine through. And remember we're going round and around and around. We're not gonna go up and down or scribble scrabble. Okay, we're going round and around. So let's talk a little bit while we're doing this here. You can start with your greens and just kind of go over these. We're gonna fill in this area. Let's talk a little bit about the New River Gorge and the New River in general, because the bridge is over the New River. So this bridge that we're drawing, it is a very well-known place in West Virginia, in the state of West Virginia. It is the third longest single arch bridge in the world. Yes, this is called a single arch bridge because it has single one arch. It's the third largest in the world. And until 2003, it was the largest single arch bridge in the world. There was a bridge in China that they built that over took that number one spot. But it is still known around the world, not around just the USA, around the world for its size. It's still the longest bridge in what's like called the Western Hemisphere and that and just our half of the world. So it's still got bragging rights, even though it's not number one, even though it's number three. Uh, let's see here. What else could I tell you about it? So the river, let's talk about the river for a second. The, this is funny. The new river, the new river that the new the bridge is, uh, goes across, it is the second oldest river in the world. Yes, in the world. Second oldest river in the world is in West Virginia. Do you know which river is number one? Which river, oh, I'm kind of, I'm talking and I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing here, friends. I'm sorry. But do you know which river in the world is, is the oldest? Number one is the Nile in Egypt. So think about that. The oldest river in the world is the Nile. The second oldest river in the world is the New River in West Virginia. How cool is that? I mean, that's pretty good company. The Nile River, pretty cool. I think that's cool. So this bridge, so it's so long. How long is it? 3,030 feet. That's a long bridge. Can you imagine if you had to cross that bridge by car every day? Because that's what cars do. They go across the bridge. And then actually, the reason why they built the bridge is because it cuts down on the travel time in that area of West Virginia uh, by a lot. I think it's like maybe like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. You know, it can save people time that need to get from one end of that area to the other. So, yeah, that's what bridges do. Bridges help us get to places we need to go, transportation. So I'm almost done with this olive green color. Now this bridge, because the New River Gorge, that area where we have the mountains and the trees is so tall, this bridge has to be pretty high up in the air. So it's the second highest vehicle bridge in the United States. So that's pretty cool too. And it's, uh, fifth in the world, I believe. Pretty cool. Pretty amazing. You know, this bridge is so unique and has such cool history to it that when they did the state quarters that had the different landmarks from different states, the 50 state quarters, the New River Gorge is on one of the state quarters. So maybe you've gotten a quarter before a 25 cent coin that has the bridge on it. You'll have to check or you'll have to look next time you have a quarter in your hand. So I'm going to move on to one of my darker greens now and we're not going to color over the entire. I'm going to just go in and I'm going to add some and try, try to keep it round because trees kind of have a roundish look to them when they're far away or 
deciduous trees, leafy trees, pine trees, and maybe not so much, but this is an area where we're not really looking at pine trees. We're having more, got more leafy, leafy green trees that change color in the fall. This would also make a very cool fall landscape if you wanted to go back with this uh, project and draw it for a fall picture because you could do all the different colors. And this area is beautiful in the fall, has lots of different foliage. It is alive with color. So the New River Gorge, that area, something else that's unique about this uh, project, the New River Gorge is a national park now. It's the newest national park in the United States. That's awesome. And another thing, if you want to know some other cool facts, you can show people how smart you are. You know how much this bridge weighs? So it's, it's you know, so big and long and ever it's got to be pretty heavy. It's 88 million pounds of steel. Woo! I mean, that makes your eyes pop out of your head. 88 million pounds. Whoa. Whoa, 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 friends. Whoa, whoa. All right. And then they have something. I'm going to my next green now. They have something. It's usually held in October. But it's called Bridge Day. Now, when you take this other green, this last green or your darker green, try to go up around the edge a little bit, kind of make like a defined area. And remember, we're going around and around, round and around, make it leafy. But there is uh, Bridge Day, like I was saying. It's usually held around October in the fall. Uh, we're on the New River Gorge bridge is held on the bridge the river gorge had, had um, i'm sorry bridge day is held on the bridge where you can like walk out on the bridge and people have different they sell different things they have different activities and they do something called base jumping so there are people that are very brave very very brave and they are they they have they were a parachute and of course they have the safety equipment to do so you can't just jump off of any bridge it without any um any safety measures, friends, I'm just saying. But they're called base jumpers, and they're people that are very skilled and practiced at doing this, and they jump off the bridge. To And they have parachutes that, parachutes, and they have cables that are, that they're connected to the bridge so they can't get hurt. Yes, you have to be very brave to do that, because I think that's a very, very, very high bridge. I moved on. This is a yellow-orange. So I'm going to add a couple little touches of yellow-orange to my treescape here. Yes, that time of the year, Bridge Day, uh, the base jumpers that are interested in jumping off the New River Gorge Bridge, connected and safe and following all the correct protocol, they do that. They have the opportunity to do that. So I'm going to take this yellow. I'm going to go ahead and add it around the river, too. Just So we're just thinking of this, guys. This looks pretty good. We're just using crayons. This is just with crayons. And you can also take a little bit of orange and push it in there. So let's talk about this river for a second. All right, so I know most of us try to draw or color in water areas blue, but if you look at the example picture, that's not blue. It's picking up the colors that are in the trees around it. So water is reflective. I'm going to take a darker green and I'm just going to go around this for a second and I'm going to take a darker brown while I'm thinking about it and I am going to just make some of my tree areas scritchy scratchy here a little bit darker so it kind of feels funny when you take a colored pencil over crayon the neat texture but I also like it because it makes it not so defined and dark it's like the, you can see like the branches through the leaves there's leaves I think that right where are the leaves the leaves friends the leaves okay so anyway back to that river I'm gonna just take my yellow here and I'm just going to, this is 
crazy. I know you're thinking, but water is blue, right? Well, water is reflective, and a lot of times it'll pick up the blue, but it'll reflect, or it will, you can see through the to the bottom, and you can see from the reflection from above. So try to make these lines as straight as possible. And then I'm going to go in with a green, a lighter green. And I'm just going to go through there like that. And it's okay. We're going to leave like some white areas in our water. People also go rafting th through the New River area, which is kind of neat. Be cool to go. I've never done rafting, white water rafting, but it would be kind of neat to. Now I've got a gray, so I'm going to use a gray that is not going to look blue, just to kind of make this look a little more like it's reflecting the colors. Now I am not a very thrill seeking person when it comes to things like jumping off of things or putting myself in harm's way. I appreciate people that are willing to take risks like that, but I'll take my risks with my art instead. How's that? Okay, but I'm going to go with my darker green here and add some color, and you could go in and add some color up here as well. So we're actually nearing towards the end of our time together today. I'm going to now take a blue chalk pastel and go lay it on its side. Never go from the top. We're not going to use it like a crayon. And I am going to add some color. And don't worry if you get the color in the bridge or through the bridge because we're going to make the bridge stand out here in just a second. So I'm going to add my color and then I'm going to take my two fingers. Remember, we don't wipe it. We rub it. I'm going to rub the color in. We can always go back and add more. We're going to rub it in and you'll get it on your fingers. And you can rub it up through here. But the white areas are going to serve like our clouds. So we're not going to draw individual clouds today. And I kind of wish I hadn't made this so stripey up through here, but that's all right. It is quite an art in itself, talking and drawing at the same time. Usually when I'm creating, I'm very quiet. Because I like to stay focused. <laughs> I know it's not much fun to have somebody teach you how to do something and have you be on silence. It's kind of kind of hard to know what to do when you're trying to draw or learn how to do something. And if I'm just being quiet, you, have to keep, you would have to keep looking back and forth and back and forth at the screen. So I'm trying to prevent that by being talkative and keeping things moving along here. So I've got that rubbed in. Remember, go round and around, not back and forth, not like a windshield wiper. And then I'm going to take a black colored pencil. I always save black for last and very lightly. And don't rush this. We're going to make the rest of these areas pop. Now remember, I'm holding it far, far back. I'm not around the point of my pencil. Because if I did that, I couldn't see what I'm doing, number one. And number two, I really want my lines to be soft and shaded. And I really would have liked to have not done this right through the bridge, put my blue, but... Oh well, the next time I'll be more careful. I would probably go back and make this solid anyway with my brown, but I'm not going to have time to do that on camera today. You're welcome to do that though. And you could, you could do the blue with a crayon laying it on its side. That's perfectly acceptable. Add that through there. You don't have to be exact. Don't be afraid. Please try to get through the trees. Let me say that again. Make sure you try to make these like they're going, like you don't, like they go through the trees, you just can't see them. All right. We don't want them to look like they're standing on top of the trees. The bridge is not built on top of the trees. The bridge goes down through the trees. You just can't see it all. 
because the trees are so thick and luscious through here. Same thing with the arch. Okay, so what we could do or what you can do is you can keep going back with your uh, greens or your yellows and you can continue to deepen the colors through here to make the foliage look more three-dimensional, make it look more lush. But ladies and gentlemen, you have drawn a structure, you've drawn the New River Gorge Bridge, and you've drawn the new river in the gorge. How awesome is that? We'll have to take our take some more field trips through West Virginia and through the United States and beyond with our artwork in the future. But good job. Wow, thank you for working so hard today. I can't wait to see your work. Make sure you sign and date all of your projects so if you try these tutorials again, you can see how far you've come. Until we meet again, my friends, remember to be kind, shine bright, and make the world colorful. Remember, every day is a good day to draw. Take care, everyone. See you next time. Bye-bye.